eyes have I had this the power belongeth unto God power belongeth unto God power belongeth unto God there's no mountain so heavy in your life that that power will not remove and there is no sorrow that is so deep in your life that that power will not uh, stop everything negative in your life power belongs unto god he'll set you free in jesus name number three now number three the peculiarity of people praising with unreproachable godliness we're looking at psalm 135 we're reading from verse 4 the peculiarity the peculiarity of the people that are praising the lord they are peculiar they're not like egyptians they're peculiar they're not like the canaanites they're peculiar they're not like the chaldeans they're peculiar they're not like pharisees and sadducees they're saved that's what makes them peculiar if you're going to praise god acceptably that peculiarity of the people of god must be in your life in psalm 135 verse 4 for the lord has chosen jacob unto himself and israel for his peculiar treasure for his peculiar treasure exodus chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 5 exodus 19 verse 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine all the earth is mine by creation but then those who are saved and those who are redeemed and those who are taken from this dirty world and they come and they put their faith in his only begotten son and a new life then comes he says all those people it's not just that he is creator he is redeemer and by redemption by salvation by conversion they become the peculiar treasure of the lord and then in verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of praise and an holy nation not a defiled nation and not a sinful nation not a backsliding nation not a falling nation and not a lukewarm nation if a peculiar, peculiar people they be priests unto god there will be an holy nation titus chapter 2 verse 14 in titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself that jesus christ he died for you on the cross so you'll be saved number one so you'll be sanctified number two he, he died on the cross so that number one you'll be pardoned all your sins number two you'll be purified he died on the cross so that it will set you free number one number two you'll be free and free indeed who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify and sanctify and purge and make holy and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works a peculiar people you know peculiar people they're not like every day can hurry every day can hurry in the world they're tired they're weary they're sluggish they're just pushing on in life it's like they're going to give up even the next minute but peculiar people when the fire of the holy ghost comes upon you you are saved you are sanctified and you are baptized in the holy ghost and the fire is burning and all the chaff is burnt out of your life you become so peculiar that whatever your age and whatever your disposition you become zealous of good works you become zealous in evangelism and zealous in soul winning and zealous in serving the Lord. When they say, let us go into the house of the Lord and worship the Lord, they spring under your feet and you're moving on with energy and excitement because you're a peculiar person in the sight of the Lord and you're zealous of good works. I pray that the zeal of the Lord will never leave your life in Jesus' name. 
then in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation the lord has chosen me i said the lord has chosen me say it for yourself now like he chose moses he has chosen you like he chose aaron he has chosen you like he chose joshua peculiar special he has chosen you like he chose david in, the, in his family of many children he singled you out and the lord has chosen you aren't you happy aren't you grateful like he chose peter like he chose paul he is a chosen vessel and as you look at yourself today while you are walking away after the service and you look at yourself i am chosen i will do good in life i am chosen i am here for a purpose i am chosen nothing can stop your journey until you finish what he has chosen you for in jesus name if any weakness any sickness any infirmity is going to stop the purpose of your choice today the come out of your life in jesus name it says but ye a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people a peculiar people a peculiar people say that a peculiar people you know the devil will want you to forget your peculiarity you'll say everybody is doing it why don't you do it i can't i'm peculiar everybody is going there why don't you go there I can't, I'm peculiar. Everybody is failing and they have to bribe, uh, you know, lecture whoever before they can make anything at all. I can't because I'm peculiar. I am peculiar. And anywhere you go, everywhere you go, your life, your language, your attitude, your conduct, your comportment, and your stature, everything will show that you are peculiar in Jesus' name. But ye, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye shall show forth the praises of him. Those are the only people that can show forth the praises of the Lord because they have been redeemed, they have been forgiven, their lives are no different, are now different, and because of that, they can offer praises unto him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank God that's true about you today. We're coming to number two now. Number two is the history of acceptable, unacceptable praises to God. As we look at all these Psalms, look at Psalm 145 verse 4. It says, one generation shall praise thy words to another and shall declare thy mighty as from this generation to this generation to that generation is the history of the praises of god look at psalm 146 verses 1 and 2 praise ye the lord praise the lord O my soul then in verse 2 it says while i live i will praise the lord i will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Now, the history of praising the Lord, there were people that praised the Lord by singing. Doesn't, they don't make any movement, they don't do any other thing. They just open their mouth and they are singing new songs unto the Lord. Even without instruments, they are praising the Lord. And in 146, I'm reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, the Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147, reading from verse 10, he delighted not in the strength of the heart. If you know the history of the people of old, in their history, there were some people that when they won, they, when they uh, won any battle, they will be on their horses like Alexander the Great, and then they will celebrate, they will decorate all those horses, and then they'll be making some macrobat.
acrobat acrobat or some gymnastics and they said they were praising God and God said I delight not in the strength of the horse and he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man there were people that will you know they make their legs uh, different different ways some of them will when they were young they will bench the uh, the legs so they can have bow legs other people will wear some kind of stockings a uh, colorful things and then some special shoes high heel low heel or whatever and they want to specially prepare for praising their gods and god said in the history of a praising god he doesn't delight in the strength of the horse he does not take pleasure in the legs of a man or the legs of a woman look at verse 11 in verse 11 the lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him while they are praising god they look at what god wants what God does not want the attitude God wants and the attitude God does not want and they fear him they're praising the Lord but they want to honor him in that place they're praising the Lord but they want to fear him they want to be obedient to his word and they say God doesn't appreciate that we can't praise God and sin we can't be praising God and lying we cannot be praising God and praising idols we cannot be praising God and going into darkness or all those things God does not like, God does not want, they jettison them, they forsake them because they fear the Lord while they are praising the Lord. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Psalm 148, I'm reading from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the high. It says, praise ye the Lord in the heavens from the heavens now when you are praising the lord you have to ask yourself is this going to be done in heaven are the angels of god in heaven in praising god are they doing this in heaven is jesus christ the very son of god in heaven now as he's praising the heavenly father you see doing this in heaven you see the history of praising the lord from heaven then to israel to all the generations and to all the people so the praises of the lord they are what we call parameters they have what we call the perimeter. They have the territory. How do they do it in heaven? How did the Israelites do it acceptably? The people that feared the Lord, and they're not just ministering to the flesh, how did they do it? And it says you praise the Lord from the heavens, you praise him in the heights. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2, it tells us, praise him all his angels you see the praises of the lord has history it is not just uh, you know the praises that people do here you know sometimes uh, we have had uh, you know the experience some people uh, musicians of the nightclub and they have their way of rejoicing they, they don't say they are praising the lord they're just relaxing uh, and they are letting go all their frustrations and then a little bit of drinking a little bit of of, uh, you know womanizing a little bit of uh, this and that and then the you know the drummers and the people will get there with the electronic guitar electric guitar and then they praise and praise and praise and some of them they get converted and they come to a church or they start a church and the things they were doing before they didn't know that if any man be in Christ all things pass away all things become new they bring the night club music into those assemblies they are setting up and they think that that is how to praise the Lord they have not studied the history of praising the Lord that they started with the angels of God in heaven and it says praise ye him all his angels and so you ask yourself is it by you know rubbing bodies of boys and girls together and rubbing bodies of men and women 
coming together is it by throwing their buttocks here and here and creating a sight is that how the angels do it in heaven we have to look at the history of praising the lord so that we don't bring uh, you know fornication adultery and lost and immorality and sensuality into the house of god and then we're pretending that we're praising the lord the angels did it and when they did it we look at the history how this one came in out that one comes in out that one comes in and when you look at music you must understand that there are different kinds of music you know there is singing in heaven that even the angels never knew because they didn't taste redemption but when i sing a redemption story angels forge their wings because they never knew the joy of redemption that's the kind of singing we're going to have redeemed souls and they're singing angels and they're singing and they have their praises and then have you known that you know the military when challenging them to put courage in them they have the kind of music the military does not play the nightclub music they play the martial music that will pump blood into their vein that will give them courage do you know that in the dentist if you go to do dentistry work to soothe the pain there's a kind of music they play there in the dentist place when they stretch up there and they're trying to you know puncture this and uh, remove this the music that will come you music has various levels and then there's classical music like the messiah then there is the normal ordinary music like uh, you know charles wesley that he composed that were praised the lord normally in hymns and churches and then there are worldly music there's worldly music and then as you know the history then you'll say that one is not for church that one is not for worshiping the lord that one is not acceptable to god because you are discerning praise ye him all his angels praise ye him all his hosts and now we come to psalm 149 i'm reading from verse 1 psalm 149 reading from verse 1 praise the lord sing unto unto the lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints and then in verse 2 it says let israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of, of zion be joyful in their king capital k in the king the one that is to come look at verse 3 here in verse 3 let them praise his name in the dance now you understand when we say when the bible says in the dance it's not the modern day dancing the modern day dancing had not come at that time when this was written in the dance and there are you know different kinds of dancing and the different kinds of steps in fact there are people there are some kinds of dancing you cannot have except to go for training there are people that have to go for training how they take the steps how they move how they swing and how they do all those things they have to be trained for that but that's the world but this one is talking about the israel of god the people of god let them praise his name in the dance now we must ask ourselves the dancing that some people have in their various assemblies where did they get that they got that from the nightclub exactly the kind of dancing they were having in the dancing halls and the nightclubs when they were still in the world now they say they are born again and then some of those who are not even born again they see that there's dancing over there and it's exactly what they're doing in the nightclub and they rush there and they say that's my church that's my kind of fellowship there's liberty there's freedom and then they can do the dancing not the dancing of the bible i'm sure you know that it's not the dancing of holy people righteous people the saints of god it's the dancing in the nightclub and then they will look for their concordance and look for a word and then they discovered psalm 
4, 9, verse 3, he says, let them praise his name in the dance. They said, I got a verse for what I'm doing now. They were doing something, you know, and they were looking for a verse to justify what they are doing. That's different. Somebody is preaching false doctrine, and then he's looking for a verse to justify the false doctrine. That's different. But you start with the Bible. Here is the Bible. How do we praise God? What do we praise God with? And with what attitude and heart do we praise God? You go from the Bible to practice, not from the practice, and then you are looking for something to justify what you are doing. Let them sing praises unto him of the timbrel and harp. Let's come to Psalm 150. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the beginning and bitterness of dancing in praises. Number two, the baseness and backsliding of dancing for pleasure, for pleasure. Number three, the burning and bondage of the defiled with pretenders. Look at number one there. We're looking at Exodus, Exodus chapter uh, 15, verse 20. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out. Miriam, a woman, and all the women went out after her, after, after the prophetess, with timbrels and with dances. Now, if uh, there is any announcement in any of these nightclubs today, and they say that, you know, there's going to be a dancing tonight, and then only women without men, without boys, old or young, no boy, no man will be there, only women. And then the person going to lead the dance tonight we have sought her out. She's called Miriam, a prophetess, and she is going to preach about repentance, about salvation. And then after that, they will lead the women in dancing. They will not have many people. Those who go to nightclubs and those who go to houses of dancing in worship, they, they are not interested in just women alone dancing. You know? And then the prophetess leading them, don't throw your body like that. Don't get near to that person like that. That one will generate lesbianism. Don't do this, don't do that. They don't like that. They, they don't want commandment. They don't want restriction in their dancing. You see what happened here? This is the history how it started, Miriam and the women, a prophetess and they're doing it to glorify God and not to exhibit their bust or their buttocks or anything, it just to praise the Lord but look at verse 21 it says, and Miriam answered them, sing ye to the Lord, not to Moses sing ye to the Lord, not to a politician, sing ye unto the Lord, not to the flesh, for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea and then in verse 22 it tells us in verse 22 it said for Moses so Moses brought Israel forth from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of shore and they went three days in the wilderness look at this and they found no water and they found no water look at verse 24 now in verse 24 and the people murmured and the people murmured and the people murmured against moses saying what shall we drink from the beginning and then the bitterness you know the people don't take all the time dancing dancing they don't have chance to be taught the word of God. By the time the preacher comes and he wants to preach, he cannot go beyond 20, 30 minutes. Why? They're tired. And the one that is interesting to them is the dancing. And so they are not taught. They want these people after the dancing. Then there was no water to drink. 
they had not given time to being taught that in everything we well, praise God. When there's water, we well, praise God. When Pharaoh is defeated, praise God. And when we come out of that Red Sea, and then there's no water to drink now, and the one we even come to is bitter, is not drinkable, they don't know to praise God. All those people that say they are praising God, they are praising God, in all those assemblies where there's dancing, that's all they know. They don't understand the word of God. And when reverses came, when there's no water, when there's no job, when there's no help, when there is uh, nothing for them to eat, grumbling and murmuring, the dancing deprived them of being taught the word of God. Exodus chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 19. In Exodus chapter 32, we're looking at verse 19, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and, and the dancing. Moses went to the mountain top and then he spent 40 days there. By the time he came down, they had lost their conviction. By the time he came down, they had lost their faith. By the time he came down, they are totally backslidden and they have gone for idol worship. The people who are concentrating on dancing and dancing and throwing the body here and there, they don't have conviction. And when any little difficulty comes up and the pastor is not around or the Sunday school teacher is not around, the backslide and when there's nobody to encourage them or pump them up or lift them up they say i don't understand they don't even believe the bible anymore they've given so much time to dancing and the conviction of the word of god is not there and then it's only dancing and moses anger wax hot and he casts the tables out of his hand and break them Beneath, uh, beneath the mount. And then in verse 31, he tells us in verse 31, Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin. Check up. In all those places where the attention is only dancing, dancing, uh, with the teenagers and the young people, see the kind of life in those places the immorality there, the fornication there, and even the breaking of families there, that these uh, young uh, dancers and worship leaders, even the worship leader himself, check up their history, check up what they're doing, they are not able to live a holy, righteous life. They're too much of the flesh and they're not of the spirit. Moses returned and said, Lord, oh, these people have seen a great sin and they have, and they have made them gods of gold. Verse 32 says, it says in verse 32, yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Verse 33, and the Lord said unto Moses, so, so ever has sinned against me, him when I blot out of my book. All those people dancing, they sinned against me. They made a calf and instead of praising me and me alone, they are praising the calf of gold that they have brought up. All those people that have done that are not interested in their dancing. That's idolatrous dancing. That's worldly dancing. That's sensual dancing. And that one is not to the glory of my name. I'm not interested in them. If you are interested in them, you are not interested in what God is interested in. And then they dress scantily and part of those ladies, part of their upper part of their body, as they bend down like this, you can see everything. It's deliberate. It is to attract the attention of those men. And then they keep close together. They hug themselves and keep themselves to themselves. And then they say they are dancing. And they are whispering some things into the ears of one another while they are doing that. God is not interested in that. That one is an assembly of sinful people, assembly for sinful practice. It says, they have sinned a great sin, whosoever have sinned against me, him 
will I blot out of my book the beginning and the bitterness of dancing in prison. I'm sure you remember they were coming from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, battlefield, and then the women came out. No men there, just the women. They came out and they were singing, and they said, "Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousand. The kind of songs, the kind of dancing, and the kind of uh, you know merry." that puts hatred in the heart of Saul and from that day because of the dancing and the singing Saul eyed David from that day he, even in that same chapter chapter 18 he wanted to throw a javelin and kill him because of that have you seen people who are fighting over a lady you know one a he dances with this lady and then the next time now another one comes dancing with her and now there is jealousy there is envy and that lady is tending towards number two when number one is still there and you say i will marry you like we've danced together let us live together forever and be married and the other one that danced with her too uh, also wants to claim her jealousy comes envy comes fighting comes and in the church there's animosity they're still attending the same church and they're still dancing and dancing but you know they don't have a good heart towards each other and so that kind of dancing brought a real terrible thing when you get home you can read second samuel chapter 6 reading from verse 14 all through to verse 23 what happened there is that the ark of the covenant of god was brought back to Israel, to the place and then they David was happy, and when David was happy, he forgot himself. A king, a king, he became frivolous, and then he was dancing and leaping and jumping, and his outer coat was flying off, and the women and everybody seen the under underwear of the king, and so the king came home, and then Michael had been waiting for him, and said. Hmm, what a great thing the king did today in exposing his nakedness to the ladies and the land. Although David gave an excuse and said, uh, God chose me, uh, you know, before your father and all that. But it says in verse 23, and Michael had no child until the day of her death. You know what happened? David was so unhappy and so irritated by the criticism of Michael. After all, he had other women. He, he'll go to other women, never came near that woman again. Just look at what the dancing has done for the family. That's the history of these dancing people are talking about in various places. It began well. It ended in bitterness. And I pray that the bitterness of worldly music will never come to our church in Jesus' name. Point number two there, number two there is the base, the baseness and backsliding of dancing for pleasure. If you uh, look at um, Job chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 11, the same thought, the little ones like a block, their children dance. Those are not Christian people, righteous people, religious people. They're just people in the land. And one of the things they make or create for their children, they have a swimming pool at the back of the house. And they also have, uh, you know, music like you have in restaurants. Sometimes you can, in the restaurant, somebody is there is playing music, not for dancing, classical music most of the time. But there are people that have, you know, kind of uh, things they make for their children and their children dance and those children they get used to dancing and any church and any assembly where there's no dancing for them 
is dull. Hearing the word of God is dull. Seeking and Jesus Christ on the mount, on the mount, preaching the sermon on the mount, and there's no singing, there's no dancing, and Jesus just, he opened his mouth and began to tell them, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, and blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, blessed are the pure in heart, because they shall see God, blessed are those when they are persecuted, they are rejoicing, because great is your reward in heaven and then those the children that used to dancing they look around there's no drumming there's no dancing there's nothing at all they said what kind of service is this even the service of jesus where jesus is the shepherd is the pastor is the teacher for them it is dull they cannot give their heart to that that's what the dancing does in the lives of people it preconditions their body that if they don't see that they don't see anything but if you go to school and the chemistry class you know the teacher is going to teach and before he comes to teach you know the drummers come and the children rise up and they dance and then the mathematics class before he comes uh, to teach the children have to rise up and dance how much chemistry will you understand how much history will you understand how much of your subject will you understand if you don't understand how do you pass any exam that's what happens in those assemblies except there is dancing they don't want to hear any preacher how will they understand the word of god how will they be converted how will their lives be totally yielded and given unto god look at these people look at verse 12 now in verse 12 it says they take the timbrel and harp and they rejoice at the sound of the organ look at verse 13 in verse 13 they spend their days in wealth and in a moment they go down to the grave verse 14 tells us therefore they say unto god depart from us all we want is dancing all we want is merriment depart from us we desire not the knowledge of thy ways that's what the dancing does for them it takes them it makes them exhibit the baseness of the human nature and makes the people who had known the lord before backslide if you know any of uh, the young people and older people who have left our church honestly and earnestly defending the faith was delivered unto the saints and they have gone into the dancing assemblies and then you you at them I about uh, you know why did you leave uh, the church you know the church deeper life i like our pastor but you know uh, the service is so dull we just sit down there for hours listening to the bible from cover to cover yes i understand knowledge is good but you know what in the place i am now since i got there we're free how free are you you're free are you free to serve god are you free from sin we're free are you free from all the lusts of the flesh we're free and then ask them about the things they used to know about where is this my verse of the bible follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord Yes, I used to know that when I was in deeper life. But you know, honestly, honestly, I've forgotten where that is in the Bible now. They don't remember because they do not desire the knowledge of his ways. All they want, all that catches their attention is the dancing. I pray where God has put you, you remain here until you see the Lord face to face in Jesus' name. You know, all the great things happening now in our church, I pray you will get your own. You know, dancing without success, why do I need that? Dancing without victory, why do I need both? The victory of God and the power of God in your life without dancing. Let those who want to dance, let them stay where they are and be dancing. But here, we're climbing to the mountain top. And here we're having the faith, the faith that cannot fail, and every mountain in your life will move away in Jesus' name.
Look at that verse 15 there. In verse 15, it says, What is the Almighty that we shall serve him? They are not serving God, only to dance and dance. What is the Almighty that we will serve him? And what profit uh, should we have if we pray to him? Look at verse 20. In verse 20, his eyes shall see his destruction. When the difficulty comes, he doesn't have faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When challenges come, he cannot solve that problem because they entered not in because of unbelief. They are not developing their faith. They are not reading the word of God. They are not getting ready for the coming of the Lord. All they are interested in is dancing and dancing. If you ask them after the service, what did you get in the service today? I mean, those people who are giving to dancing and dancing, I, I don't, don't ask me what I got in the service. I just know I was happy. I just know I exercised myself. In fact, we danced until my legs were paining me. That's all they remember. But here, when we come here and they say, what do you remember? You say, okay, if you are going to listen to what, you know, what I remember, you need to sit down because then you go from 145 to 146 to 147 to 148 and to 150, you say, not, not, it's not enough. Then you go to Exodus, then you go to Job, then you go to New Testament. That's what I got. How did I pray? This is the way I pray. You load them up with the word of God that will bring blessing in their lives. And I pray you'll be the carrier of the knowledge of the word of God in Jesus name but in the old case his, his eyes shall see his destruction and he shall drink of the wrath of the almighty uh, let's come to uh, you know before I go to number three you remember the daughter of Herodiah and the daughter of Herodiah you know um, Herod was having birthday and he had all these kings before him all the counselors before him and then they called this girl to just a teenager to come and dance and she danced and danced and pleased Herod well and the people that were sitting down there and then Herod said ask me whatever you want up to the half of my kingdom I will give thee that's what dancing does. It removes their thinking faculty. It removes their future inheritance. It makes them, they can waste their full resources, all the money. When the dancing turns their head, and then the girl said, wait for me, and let me go and ask my mother. And she went to ask the mother, and she came back, and she said, give me here now the head of John the Baptist in a charger. You see, the people that are given to that kind of dancing, they don't respect the men of God, they don't respect the foreigners of Christ, they don't respect Christ. All they want, they want the head of John the Baptist. What are you going to do with the head of John the Baptist, young lady? Is that going to give you a certificate? Is that going to give you money? Is that going to, you know, affirm your future? Is that going to give you a good husband? But all they want, they want the head of the man of God. They want the head of the people who are preaching the word of God. And then Herod, Herod felt sorry. Even, you know it is wrong, you felt sorry, and the dancing and so influenced Herod that even though he felt sorry, he still gave the head of John the Baptist unto that girl, not thinking, how will that girl's future be? And what will this child, how would her dream be? Seeing the head, it, the beheaded the head of John the Baptist, the trauma and the sorrow and the agony and the failure it will bring in her life not only that and the eternal punishment hellfire in the life of such daughter and mother and herod himself that's what this kind of thing does when people dance and dance and they forget the future and they forget salvation and they forget holiness and they forget walking straight and living straight and they forget obedience to the word of God all the days of their lives. I pray that will not happen to us. You know, the word of God says, be sober, be vigilant. Are you sober on the dancing floor? 
How are you sober watching those men and women, boys and girls, you know, doing all that and messing up their life? Are you sober in that situation? How are you vigilant in that situation? But when you come to hear the word of God and you're settled and you're not into all these frivolities and all these uh, things of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the people are committed to, and you're seeking the word of God. And when it's time to pray, you pray in the word of God, and the word of God has a transformational effect in your life. That's what we need. That's what the Lord has given us, and we're going to keep it to the very end in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three is the burning and bondage of the defiled with pretend, pretenders. The burning I'm referring to here is burning with lust. Burning with lust. You get to, you know, that place. You see their different kinds of dressing. You see their attitude. You see their interactions. You see how they are holding each other. Even you are sitting on the floor. You are not dancing like they are dancing. All that you see will inflame your flesh. It will give you burning inside your body. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 27. It says likewise also the men living the natural use of the woman bond in their lust. Bond in their lust. All that kind of, uh, you know, merriment and dancing and all that and, uh, you know, the things that go along with the dancing you know, whether it is in the nightclub or it's in the church floor anywhere, it gives them burning of the lost. They burn in their lost one toward another. Men with men walking that which is unseemly. Uh -huh. Some people say, okay, if, uh, you know, it is all the women dance with Miriam, we're going to have bone to bone. That is a man to man or woman to woman. And you know, in the world in which we live now, men and men walking that which is so simply. Homosexuals are there, the gays are there, and some of them even have, you know, churches and, you know, that you are man to man, bone to bone, does not hinder, does not stop the evil of the dancing. Um, you know, with once, uh, you know, the flesh of two people coming together, or woman to woman, you want to abstain from every appearance of evil. The Lord has cleansed you and purged you and purified you. I pray you remain clean and pure in the sight of the Lord until He comes in Jesus' name. It says, likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, they bond in their loss one to another. Men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves, look at this, look at this, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was made. And then it tells us in verse 32, in verse 32 it says, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, death, the second death, and the punishment in hellfire, they are worthy of death, they do not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. I pray the Lord will deliver us from even the desire, even the longing, and the passion for such a thing in Jesus' name. The service and the service days, you know, we start and we come and we sing meaningful hymns and we think about what we're singing because the Bible says to sing with understanding. And then we have searching the scriptures because the Bible says search the scriptures for in them you think he have eternal life. And then we have question and answer because the disciples, they ask questions from the Lord Jesus Christ and we give the answer and then we pray because it says pray without ceasing and then we give an offering it says bring an offering and worship him in the beauty of holiness and then we hear the word because it is the preaching of the word that brings salvation unto souls everything we do according to the new testament we do everything for the benefit and for the profit of the people that come to church and all those extraneous things and frivolous things that will get us into the works of the flesh and cancel 
the holiness that will take us to heaven, all those things we reject. And then as we do that, you know, some people are wondering, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? We're doing everything that glorifies God. And as we do that, our church will keep on glorifying the Lord in Jesus' name. Your life will glorify the Lord. Your worship will glorify the Lord. And your praises to the Lord will glorify Him in Jesus' name. Let's go to number three now. Point number three, the height of ascending or ceasing praises for God's glory. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 53. In Luke chapter 24, verse 53, and we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Continually, continually in the temple. No dancing there. This is New Testament now. They were continually praising and blessing the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and prayers. Verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Praising God. New Testament. They came to the Lord. Three thousand of them and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and now it says God was adding to them as they were evangelizing everyone and then it says they were praising God having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved it tells us in Philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 10 Philippians chapter 1 verse 10 that she may approve things that are excellent. As you look at what people do in you know, other assemblies, in other fellowships, in other gatherings, it's not that okay, they're doing that, why don't we do that? You look at things which are excellent. You look at things which are approved of God. You look at things that will get you more into the depth of the unsearchable riches of Christ and then you approve the things that are excellent that he may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. It tells us in verse 11 it says being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. Everything you do, whether you eat or drink, whether you praise or pray, whether you sing or whatever, you do everything to the glory and the praise of God. Three things. Number one, the acceptable pattern of praising and glorifying God. Glorifying God in an acceptable way. Praising God in an acceptable way. The acceptable pattern of praising and glorifying God. Number two, the assured place of praise by the godly. The godly. The godly people of God they have a place, a short place of praise for the godly. And number three, in the ascending power of praise from grace to glory ascending power of praise from grace to glory let's look at number one is the acceptable pattern of praising and glorifying god look at luke chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 13 luke chapter 2 reading from verse 13 and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Angel, multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God. If there is anything to copy, if there is any pattern to follow, that's the pattern to follow. That's how they praised God because Christ was born. His Savior had been born. Look at verse 14 and say, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And then we're told in verse 20, it says, And the shepherds returned, 
glorifying and praising God. He had seen that Christ, the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, was born and they returned, not dancing, not dancing, but they were glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Look at chapter 20, uh, Luke chapter 20, we're reading from verse uh, chapter 10, rather, in Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 20, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that you have miracle for the body only. But it says, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? You know, we normally sing in chorus, what's a joy when oh, you don't have Jesus? Tell me your joy when oh, you don't have Jesus. Why are you singing? Why are you dancing? Why are you rejoicing? Tell me your joy if you are not saved. If your name is not written in the book of life in heaven, if you're still a sinner and sin is overcoming you, and if you died today without Christ, without salvation, you go to hellfire forever and ever. What's your joy? What are you dancing about? Tell me your joy if you don't have Jesus. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I pray our names will remain forever in the book of life in heaven in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 64. Luke chapter 1, verse 64. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. He spake and praised God. What did he say when he praised God? Look at verse 68. In verse 68, he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. And then in verse 69, he hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That's the reason for our joy. And then he tells us in verse 70, and he speak that as he speak that the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Look at verse 70. In verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hands of our enemies, my servant, tell me, and serve him, tell me, without fear. You'll serve God without fear in Jesus' name. And then in verse 6, 75, in holiness and righteousness before him, holiness and righteousness before him, holiness and righteousness before him now. When those uh, people are on the dancing floor and uh, the boy is holding firmly to the girl and the man is holding firmly to the woman, what's going on in their heart? What's going on in their brain? What's going on in their body? What feelings are, are they having in their body? Well, the bodily contact of the man and the woman on the dancing floor like that, are they really righteous and holy before God? God who knows their hearts, who knows their their feeling and who knows their disposition but the kind of worship the Lord wants us to have and the kind of praise he wants us to have that will serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life I pray that holiness the Lord will implant in every one of our hearts in Jesus name in verse 77 verse 77 it said to give knowledge of salvation unto his people. That's the purpose of worship. That's the purpose of gathering together to give the knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of sins. Look at number two here now. Number two is the assured place of praise by the godly. Assured 
pray, place of praise might be godly. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12, that we should be unto the praise of his glory, that our life, our thoughts, our action, our worship, our, our profession, everything we do, everywhere we are, that everything about us will be to the praise of his glory, not to the praise of the flesh. Not to the praise of the nature, the contour, and the, you know, of the body. Not to the praise of the tight dressing, you know, that people wear and then they have, you know, those uh, messy things. But everything you do, whether you're in the house of God or anywhere you are, that everything will be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ. Look at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. To the praise of his glory. Let's look at uh, number three here now. Number three is the ascending power of praise from grace to glory ascending power of praise as you praise the lord for me clean heart as you praise the lord with a truthful mouth as you praise the lord with a clear conscience as you praise the lord without lust and without evil thoughts as you praise the lord with faith from faith in the word of god in the bible and that praise is ascending to god while you are praising the lord all your enemies have been scattered while you are praising the Lord, all those prison walls, they are being shattered. And while you are praising the Lord, the strength of the Lord and the health from Calvary will be flowing into your body in Jesus' name. And as you are praising the Lord and rejoicing before the Lord, and there's no fleshly activity, there's no loss, there's no evil, all the promises of God, they have been fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 25. Acts chapter 16, reading from verse 25, and at midnight, the midnight of sorrow, the midnight of problem, the midnight of all the stripes they laid on them, and the midnight when everybody slept, but they couldn't sleep because of the pain racking their bones and their body. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They didn't complain, they didn't murmur, and they didn't accuse God, they didn't criticize any, they didn't hate anybody. They prayed, and they sang praises unto God. Sang praises unto God. Sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Their praises, their singing woke up. The prison, uh, the prisoners who were sleeping. And then something happened. Something will happen. I said something will happen. Look at this in verse 26. It says, and, and suddenly, that's how your miracle will come. That's how the power of God will come in your life. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of, of the prison were shaking. Everything shakable in your life will be shaking. All the imprisonment of the devil will be shaking. All the incarceration, all that, a bedridden condition, everything will be shaking out of your life in Jesus' name. And immediately, and immediately, where are you? And immediately, I said, where are you? Doors of opportunity are open for you. And immediately, and immediately, all the prison doors were opened. And everyone's bands, and everyone's bands, and everyone's bands, and everyone's bands. Where are you? You got it. Rise up, and everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loosed. Loosed. Delivered. Set free. Praise Him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Let everything in you praise the Lord.
pray without ceasing, glorify him, honor him, praise his holy name, don't be tired, he's a great God, greatly to be praised and greatly to be honored. He merits our praise. He merits our glorifying Him. He merits all our time. He merits all our days. He merits everything we have with your soul, with your mind, with your heart, with your spirit. Praise the Lord. Honor Him. Honor Him. Exalt Him. Extol his name, praise him for what he did at Calvary, giving his only begotten son, praise him, glorify him. With all your heart, with all your soul, at all times, in all situations, in all conditions, whatever is happening all around, and whatever the amount of flood or water going under your bridge, praise Him. Your sage, praise Him. Your name is in the book of life, praise Him. He has selected you. He has chosen you. He brought you out of your family and he showered his blessing of grace upon your life. Praise him. For revealing himself unto you as savior, as sanctifier, as healer, as redeemer, as deliverer, as the baptizer and the Holy Ghost, I'm making you to understand that all the problems of your life, He handles everything and He's able, able to do all that you ask, all that you think, beyond what you are asking, beyond what you are thinking, He's able. Praise Him for that. Unceasing praise, unending praise, coming out of the depth of your soul unto the Lord. Look at all around you. Look at what He has done. Look at what He's doing. And say, Lord, I praise your name. In the midst of it all, I praise your name. I glorify you. I honor you. Lord, my life will glorify you. My character will glorify you. All my deeds will glorify you. I will so live to the glory of your name. I'll be glorifying you every step of the way. Honor him. He is worthy of our praise. Glorify Him is worthy of all the honor we can give unto the Lord. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. And while they were singing to the praise of the Lord, forgetting all their wounds, Forgetting all the latches and the weaves at their back. Forgetting all the pain. They centered and focused on the praises of the Lord. Then, immediately, then suddenly, the prison doors were opened. And all their stuff, all their chains, everything loosed. There's power in praise. There's power in glorifying the Lord.
let your life be a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. Praise Him. As we learn, praise Him. As we study, praise Him. Be doer of the world. And do what He has taught us. Praising Him, praising Him, praising Him, glorifying Him, and rejoicing before Him. He chose us, rejoice for that. He saved us, rejoice for that. He gives us assurance of heaven, rejoice for that. And let him recognize your praise of him. Praise him now and thank him. He has heard your prayer. He has heard your praises. He's giving you grace that every step of your life Every step of the way, your life will now continue to honor Him. Will continue to glorify Him. In Jesus' name we pray. And the God honoring people, God glorifying people, God's peculiar praising people say, Your prison doors are open. All those foundations are shaking. And every time you chaining you up, you are loose in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan will not have power anymore over you. Sickness will not have power anymore over you. Evil spirit and evil power will not overcome you anymore in Jesus' name. He has visited you. Where are you? He has honored you. What are you? He has answered your prayer. What are you? All those mountains have moved out in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we're not just to learn. We're not just to study. We're not just to read about praising you. We're actually to put it in practice and to praise you and to honor you, and to glorify you. And that we have done for a little time today, Lord, accept our praises in Jesus' name. As we go back home, our lives will glorify you. Our conversation will glorify you. 
our character and conduct will glorify you in Jesus' name. Every day, every moment of the day, in the morning, afternoon, and evening, and at night, any time, every time, everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, all our interactions, everything will glorify you in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, not to glorify you like ignorant people who are doing the works of the flesh and they are dancing and merriment and all that, and they are not uh, giving all the glory to you from the death of their hearts. They are only having the pleasures of the flesh. Help us, Lord, to cancel that out of our praises in Jesus' name. Lord, as we bless you like the angels do, as we bless you like Jesus Christ, our Lord did, as we bless you like the apostles did, as we bless you, like the New Testament says, like they glorified your name. I pray the blessing of praises that you daily load us for blessing. Everything will come to every life in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for all your people today. I pray any sickness there, any weakness, any infirmity there, I command, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that any impossibility, any mountain, and any kind of hurdle that, you know, we've been trying to climb and jump and we've found impossibilities, I pray that impossibilities will not become possible in the lives of all your people in Jesus' name instantaneously lord immediately lord suddenly lord everyone will have their own miracle the joy of the lord be your strength the power of the lord be your protection and all the provision of the lord be yours even from this hour this moment in jesus name daily 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 the Lord will load you with blessing. As you go, go on singing. As you go, go on rejoicing. As you go, go on celebrating the power of our God. And all those Ammonites and Amorites and all those Jebusites and whatever they are called before you, the Lord will scatter them. And I pray every blessing you have desired, every blessing you have seen in the lives of other people, and you desire that, the Lord put it in your life in Jesus' name. From day to day, from week to week, from year to year, the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your life. Confirm it, Lord, in every heart, every life of the young, of the children, of the youth, of the campus people, of the parents, of the adults, everyone without exception, in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I will praise him forever, forever, forever. I will praise him forever, forever, forever. I will praise him. Will you praise him? I will praise him. I will praise him. Will you praise him? The Lord confirm the blessing of praises in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you and have a happy day and a happy week in Jesus' name.
169. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins I grieve to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, combat with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms, they will take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there.
both of you.